if you consider an animal cell to be a factory, then the plasma membrane of the cell is just like the boundary wall of the factory. Now, every factory has their own gate by which people can go in, go out, the worker ca workers can go in or out. Just like the factory, the cell membrane also has specific ion channels, transporters, etc., which can regulate the movement of ion and other particles across the membrane. Now, these proteins, which are present in the plasma membrane of the cells, could be of different kind. They could be receptors, ion channels, some GTPAs helping in some cell signaling role, ion pumps, or even membrane-bound enzymes. So each of these proteins might have very different role. Now, according to fluid mosaic model, the plasma membrane is a sea of lipids on which there are some islands floating, which are basically the membrane proteins. So the fluid mosaic model state that the membrane is mostly lipid and membrane has two bilayers. So membrane has a phospholipid bilayer, right? So the basic composition of the membrane is nothing but the phospholipids. Phospholipids are the chunk of the membrane. So the phospholipids has a hydrophobic head, a hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. In the hydrophobic tail, there are basically, it is composed of uh, fatty acid tails, whereas the hydrophilic head has glycerol and specific uh, polarized group, which is basically charged. And that is why it is the head of the phospholipid is charged and it loves water. Now, if we look at the structure in details, so the common group, the, the head group could be like different. For example, serine, choline or ethanolamine. And based on which of the head group is present, the phospholipid would be termed differently. For example, if the head group is serine, it is phosphatidyl serine. Or if the head group is choline, it is phosphatidyl choline. Sometimes, instead of glycerol, another kind of alcohol is present, which is called sphingosine. And the lipid containing that, the phospholipid containing sphingosine, is known as sphingomyelin. Sphingomyelin is also abundant phospholipid in present in the membranes. Now, if we talk about the distribution of phospholipids in different uh, organelles inside the cell, we would see a huge heterogeneity. For example, if we compare ER versus Golgi, the membrane composition would be very different. And scientists are still trying to understand what is the significance behind that. Forget about the organelles. If we just talk about the inner leaflet of the membrane, versus the outer leaflet of the membrane, there is also heterogeneity in terms of distribution of the uh, phospholipids. For example, phosphatidyl ethanolamine is mostly present in the internal site or the cytosolic site, whereas phosphatidyl choline is prevalently present in the outer site, I mean the extracellular side. So this distribution heterogeneity is very important because, and, and Sometimes, looking at the distribution, people can understand that how healthy a cell is. Because in case of apoptosis, phosphatidyl ethanolamine goes outside in the outer leaflet than the inner leaflet. So, these distribution has defined inner meaning to, uh, towards cell physiology. Now, the membrane lipids are actually not rigid. They are fluid. Just like you can see, they are always moving and they are like getting disorganized or reorganized, this kind of dynamics is happening all the time. And even the membrane fluids and membrane proteins are actually also not static. They are also moving all across the membrane. So first of all, we should ask that what type of motion does they exhibit? So among they, they can their motion can be classified into three subcategories. For example, first is lateral motion, that a particular lipid can laterally diffuse all across the membrane. Second, a particular lipid can rotate across a, a specific axis, giving a rotational motion. There could be transpilar flip-flop movement as well. And sometimes these motions are spontaneous, and sometimes these motions are guided. So we talk about some guided motion. So first of all, sometimes the lipid from the outer leaflet can be quickly transformed to the inner leaflet 
and this can happen spontaneously as well. But sometimes with the help of an enzyme known as flipase, this reaction is very fast and the lipid from the outer leaflet get transported to the inner leaflet or flipped towards the inner leaflet. The opposite to it is performed by the enzyme flopase, by which the uh, phospholipids in the inner leaflet moves toward the other side. These two type of movement can happen simultaneously and this is triggered by an enzyme scramblease, which can uh, flip them in opposite direction at the same time. So these enzymes help in lipid movement and with the enzyme the rate of the reaction is way fast. Now we should also understand that what are the factors that can maintain membrane fluidity. So first of them is cholesterol. The amount of cholesterol which is present in the membrane determines how fluid or rigid it would be. So cholesterol work like a dynamic glue. So in lower concentration cholesterol increase the membrane rigidity whereas it's surprising that at higher concentration cholesterol increases the membrane fluidity. So cholesterol is a steroid which is also synthesized in the uh, cytoplasm and by the enzyme uh, and the key enzymes are present in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum we would be talking about that now cholesterol has key parts it has a non-polar hydrocarbon tail it has a rigid steroid structure and a polar group so it can easily fit in in between the bilayer in between the phospholipid <coughs> residues. Now the phospholipid re residues are kind of glued by cholesterol and thereby their movement is kind of restricted. So apart from cholesterol, the type of the phospholipid tail it has, it also uh, impinge on uh, the fluidity factor. For example, if the phospholipid bilayer has mostly uh, saturated uh, hydrocarbon moiety, then the membrane would be more rigid and more organized but if a membrane is a mixture of saturated and unsaturated phospholipids then there would be kink in the unsaturated uh, phospholipids and due to that the membrane would be more dynamic and fluid whereas a membrane which doesn't have uh, these uh, unsaturated phospholipids would be less fluid so depending upon the saturation of the phospholipids itself, the membrane fluidity could be different. And membrane fluidity also depends upon temperature and tons of other factors we, which, which we, we would be talking in other video. Now, phospholipid biosynthesis takes place in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum because we have to understand that how the phospholipid is synthesized at the first place. So we know that inside the cell, in the cytoplasm, glucose get converted to acetyl CoA and acetyl CoA further get converted to fatty acyl CoA. Now, this fatty acyl CoA, along with glycerol 3 phosphate, on the surface of a uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, can get converted to phosphatidic acid by the help of the enzyme acyl transferase. Now, this phosphatidic acid is one of the key components for ph phospholipid biosynthesis. Phosphatic acid, by the help of the enzyme phosphatase, get converted to diacylglycerol. Now, the diacylglycerol can be further processed by phosphotransferase enzyme to attach a head group on that. For example, a choline phosphotransferase would attach a choline group to the diacylglycerol and it would form phosphatidylcholine, which is a key phospholipid present in the outer leaflet of the membrane. Similarly, the head group could attached could be different, for example, serine or ethylamine, and depending upon that, uh, these uh, phospholipid would be also different. Now, the rate limiting step of cholesterol biosynthesis also takes place in the sm smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So, smooth endoplasmic reticulum could be uh, considered as a hub of uh, phospho membrane lipid biosynthesis, both cholesterol and both uh, the phospholipid itself. Now, in case of cholesterol, the main component uh, is uh, acetoacetyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA, which condense to form HMG-CoA. Now, HMG-CoA gets reduced to mevalonate 
by the help of the enzyme HMG coeridactase and this step is considered to be the death limiting step in the cholesterol uh, biosynthesis pathway and that is triggered by smooth endoplasmic reticulum itself and after a series of pathway mevalonate get converted to cholesterol and cholesterol could either be uh, incorporated into the membrane or cholesterol could be used as a raw material to create a uh, steroid steroid uh, hormones so that is why uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is super important for plasma membrane biogenesis itself now if we talk about different types of cell the cell membrane identity chemically might look similar for example we can consider an epithelial cell versus a neuronal cell the composition of the membrane is mostly similar because it has phospholipids proteins etc but sometimes the membrane could separate charge for example a neuron's membrane is charged whereas a normal cell's membrane is uncharged and these this has very different meaning and the way the neuron's membrane is charged is by restriction of specific ionic flow by sodium potassium atpas and specific other voltage gated ion channels and that is how membrane uh, potential is generated in the neuron now Apart from that, we talk about lipid rafts. So lipid rafts are specific domains on the membrane. Here we talk about a B cell which produce antibody and try to combat infection, right? And B cell surface has B cell receptor. When the B cell is not encountering or engaging into immune reaction, its receptor are kind of dispersed away in the membrane. But when it encounters a pathogen or it detects an antigen, the B cell receptors come close in the membrane in a micro domain known as lipid raft. And this is a rich, this lipid raft is a site for uh, talking of many signaling molecules and thereby signaling pathways could be triggered inside the cell. So in that context, lipid rafts are super important in terms of cell signaling. And we would be talking about lipid rafts in a whole different video. So for now, it's just an overview of cell membrane i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you